Now it's my pleasure to introduce a true champion for our movement, a person who dedicated her career to helping ensure end-of-life options throughout the country. Telling her story, and in it the story of Oregon, today she is sharing the story of how she came to be involved in the movement in hopes that you too will be inspired. Join me in welcoming to the stage Oregon's 34th governor, Governor Barbara Roberts. I'm not quite as tall as Matt, maybe in my next life. Before I begin the story I want to tell you, I would like to acknowledge one other person in the room. Uh, some of you have seen that the second edition of my book on death and grieving is over on the table today. These are the first copies that have been available of the new second edition. And I would like to introduce Maureen Michelson, the publisher from New Sage Press that has twice published my book. Maureen. Part of the way a story gets told is to have a publisher who believes in the story. Back in the late 1980s, my husband Frank was serving in the state senate. He was one of the longest serving members of the Oregon legislature and a senate leader with an extensive progressive record. We were both elected officials at the time, but earlier he had been my political mentor and hero when I made my first foray into the legislature as a part-time citizen advocate for handicapped children. He remained my hero. Over dinner one evening, Frank shared with me his plans to introduce legislation to help terminally ill Oregonians end their life when pain and deterioration left them no quality of life. I was not immediately supportive. I counseled Frank that such a bill would be highly controversial. Over the last few years, Frank had faced a quadruple heart bypass and prostate cancer. His cancer treatment had damaged a spinal column and left him permanently in a wheelchair. But this bill was not about him, he explained. It was a right that every person should have at the end of life and as the end of life neared. It was about choice, about dignity, about compassion. Frank introduced the bill, ignoring my counsel, of course. Yet in spite of his status as a Senate leader, his bill never even received a hearing. The next session, Frank reintroduced his bill with exactly the same results. In the third session, he again reintroduced his Death with Dignity bill, determined this time to get a hearing, to give voice and public awareness to this important issue. Late in the session, in the session, Frank got his hearing. No action, just a hearing. Frank called it a sympathy hearing since it followed Frank's public announcement that he had been diagnosed with the metastasized cancer of the lungs. It was a terminal diagnosis. But Frank got his hearing and he got something even more vital to his cause. He got supporters. Barbara Coombs Lee was on committee staff that session. Others in the hearing room gave support to the bill and they all formed a staunch group ready to act when the legislature failed to do so, which they did. Plans and activity began quickly on a citizen initiative petition to place the death with dignity issue on the Oregon ballot. Frank was thrilled about the citizen action. He trusted that the work of these early advocates would lead to success. When the 1993 legislature adjourned, Frank, tired and hurting, 
came home to the governor's residence. He came home to die. It was August, and we both understood that his terminal prognosis of one year to live was narrowing down to what was likely the final three or four months of his life. More and more often, I tried to bring briefcases of work home to accomplish my needed work as governor. I wanted to be home with Frank every opportunity I could make happen. It was a challenging balancing act between my job and my love. Every couple of days, Frank would ask how the signature collection process was doing in the Death with Dignity petition. And I would give him the positive updates and he would respond each time saying, if this measure reaches the ballot, I know Oregonians will support it. And each time I agreed. As the fall of 1993 continued, Frank knew full well that this ballot process would last into the 1994 election season. He understood he would die many months before the law could be in place. But Frank always understood that this bill was not about him. I, on the other hand, understood that if the legislature had acted when Frank first introduced his bill, he would now have the option to end his suffering. I knew clearly that he would have used the law. Watching him deteriorate in those last weeks, I fully understood why Oregon so desperately needed the law. And I told Frank, I promised him I would support the ballot measure and add my voice to the campaign and to the movement. Just as he had mentored me 20 years ago in learning the legislative process, he was again my teacher on end of life. Frank died on October 31st, 1993, as I knelt beside him and gave him permission to let go, to die. He remained my hero to the end. In 1994, as governor of Oregon, I, en I endorsed the Death with Dignity ballot measure. In November of that year, Oregon voters passed the measure by 51%. Frank had believed in the Oregon voters. He had been right every step of the way. Over the last years, I have fulfilled my, fulfilled my promise to Frank to advocate for this special human mission. When the measure reached the ballot in the state of Washington, I traveled across the Columbia River with Joy Jamie to urge Washington voters to join their fellow Northwest citizens in Oregon in support of their ballot measure. I made two trips to Vermont to testify and to encourage their legislators to pass their version of our law. The third time, snowed in at an airport on my way to Vermont, I testified to the Vermont Senate Committee by telephone. I did press events, supporter meetings, and finally testified to the California Senate Committee. I met with three governors in those three states and told them how proud and grateful I felt about giving my citizens this remarkable end-of-life choice. With the success in Washington State and Vermont, and the huge latest success in California, I feel I am still acting in Frank's behalf to carry his message and his cause to millions of terminally ill Americans. It has become my cause. Yet our work is not finished. We still have promises to keep.